I'm Lady Aska and today we want to talk about how to make different tails in V-Ride Studio. While I do have a tutorial on tails already, I realized that the actual making of the tail was kinda rushed and the focus was more on how to attach them later. So let me fix this today by teaching you how to create three different types of tails from beginning to finish. Let's get started. We start in V-Ride Studio and choose one of the four bottom categories in hairstyles to create our tail with. I am choosing the extra category here. We select create new and then switch to edit hairstyle. The first thing that we will do for each tail is to adjust the mesh, which is always like half the work. There are only a few exceptions to this rule, but more on that later. We start off with the easiest, which is a fox-like tail. Once the mesh does have the form you want, you start drawing the tail. Since we will likely have to adjust the tail multiple times, I suggest you start with a smaller strand, because these will have less added points and are easier to manage. The rest is basically playing with the width and thickness sliders. Don't forget that you can always put custom numbers into these to get better results. I also recommend to use the curve with the points at the bottom for fine tuning. These will adjust the shape of your hair strand and for a nice fox-like tail, we want the top part to be narrow, the middle part big and fluffy and a tip on the end of the tail. Once you are more or less happy with the outcome, there is one last trick here to consider. Through the arrow options here at the top, we can not only adjust the points on the mesh, but also transform the mesh like we would in Unity. So with the resize tool at the bottom, you can squish your tail, make it larger or compress it a bit more to get closer to your desired outcome. And of course, don't forget to use the mesh as well if you aren't happy with how the tail flows. As always, check from all angles till you're happy with the result. To tail number two, the all-time favorite, a cat tail. Okay, a little heads up first. Since v is not able to create round hair strands, this will never be a perfect cat tail. But we can get as close as possible. We start again with the hair mesh, as before. Set it up roughly, since there is always time for fine-tuning later, especially once you drew the hair on. As you see, the base is not that much different than the one for the other tail. We play around with the thickness and width and the secret to a nice cat tail is actually the adjustment points at the bottom. Not only do we need a more or less consistent strand this time around, that is neither too thick nor too thin, at a certain part of the tail we also need the illusion of a somewhat round tip at the end. As you see though, if I would just place all the points at the top in a line, we would get a consistent strand but way thicker than what we want our cat tail to be. Really, take your time with this part. Now onto the round tip of the tail. The trick is here to have the last point placed a little bit downwards, so the open strands close in like a flower, and at least from afar look pretty round. After that you can again adjust with the arrow option, that is moving or transforming the hair mesh. For some tails, you can also use the twist option. Sometimes, if used in moderation, this can give a bit more of a rounder look. Here though, because of the curve at the bottom, it looks way too deformed. Instead, I began adjusting the width and thickness because what may look good from one angle doesn't always look good from another. And maybe I lied when I said the fox tail was the easiest. As you see here, it's far easier to make a mouse tail. Take this as a little hidden bonus. The rest is literally rinse and repeat till you're happy with how everything looks. That may mean going over the hair mesh again and adjusting points or getting over the thickness option for the millionth time so it does look right to you. On to tail number three. This time a chipmunk tail, which is, because of its form, a bit more challenging. And this is actually the first time where I will advise you to not set the hair mesh right away because otherwise it will be hard to get the hair to curve correctly. You can see here what I mean. If I try to drag the hair through the curve, it just clips through instead of following the mesh. 
So instead, we start with the flatter version of the mesh first, draw our strand on and drag it to the bottom via the edit points. I try to align the points here as good as possible in a straight line, so I will have a more solid base to work with. Now I will first put the cross section to bottomless triangle to start with a flatter look. And this time we actually want the points here to align at the top. Basically throw everything I said for the last two tails overboard now. This time we are doing the crazy stuff. The tip is a bit more challenging as well because it has to be somewhat round. At the moment this may not look like a chipmunk tail at all because here the magic happens once I go crazy with the width. And if I say crazy, I mean really crazy. Looks a bit like a pedal, doesn't it? And now is the perfect moment to adjust our hair mesh into the right shape. This part is a bit tricky and can take some time till the hair isn't clipping through itself anymore. Now is also a good moment to adjust the curve at the bottom here again to counteract any weird stretching or morphing through the hair mesh. And as you may see, the tail looks like a cardboard cutout. Of course. This has to be fixed. Instead of using the bottomless triangle under cross section, I now switch back to triangle to at least give it a bit of a fuller look. I'm morphing the mesh a bit further around now, but again, be careful with weird behavior of the hair and don't worry if something goes wrong. With CTIL plus Z, you can always undo actions and try again. Of course, you can add a bit more fluff to your tail if you want, but that's it overall. Now let's quickly go over adding bones to this one, so your tail can swoosh and wiggle around nicely. Save your tail as a new item and go back into hairstyles. Here we will now select edit hair bounds. That's where the bones get assigned to our hair. First we find our hair in one of the freehand groups. Since these are all listed in the same order as we created them, our tail will be in group 3, hair 3. If you select the hair here, the tail lights up and you know it's the right hair strand. Now we confirm with create bone group and our tail got some bones. I will add in here a few more than the standard four and edit the fixed points to be closer to the point where the tail should connect to the body. Everything before that fixed point won't move, so you can use that to your advantage. To talk a bit about the funny things you can do, let me show you the gravity option. A bit just for fun, I decided to showcase a tail with minus one gravity and a gravity of one because you can also put custom values into these. Sadly, you can't see the impact here, so to check the effect, we can leave the bone edit menu and go over to the photo booth option at the top left corner. Here you can see that the tail with minus one gravity would just fly upwards and basically meld together with our avatar, while a gravity of one would pull the tail down. Now for a nice bouncy chipmunk tail, we will just set the gravity back to zero and get this as a result. As you see here, the tail is not actually attached to your back at the moment, since we created it out of hair. To do that, we would have to use Unity. And as mentioned at the beginning, I may have just the right tutorial here for you to do that. I see you guys next time. Hope you have a wonderful day.